everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this countdown video to the official start of the hurricane season. So we're 76 days out from June 1st, which is the official start of the hurricane season annually. And so I will be talking about this season a bit later in the video. We'll be looking at some variables. As we can see right now on the infrared satellite imagery, uh, there's some thunderstorm activity and even some heavy rain moving through parts of uh, eastern Texas and into Louisiana as well but uh, aside from that blob up there we're not seeing anything much really happening across the atlantic basin and especially the caribbean so there's uh very stable weather conditions across the caribbean right now so nothing much is happening of course there are a few passing showers at times but in terms of any significant shower or thunderstorm activity that's not really happening across the basin but as we're going to be heading through today, uh, as I said, there may be a few showers loitering around. So for parts of the Greater and Lesser Antilles, even near the Bahamas, going towards Central America as well. Uh, some parts of Colombia are currently experiencing some thunderstorm activity. So there may be some additional showers later today. Similar story for parts of Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana. ABC Islands should be on the drier side though. And it will also be a windy day across many areas, especially the southern Caribbean, so the ABC Islands, Trinidad, Tobago, uh, parts of the Lesser Antilles, especially the Windward Islands as well, going up to sections of Belize and the Caribbean coast of Mexico. So it may be a little bit uh, windier today. Okay, so this has been uh, the kind of general weather conditions across the region. So nothing crazy happening right now and uh, nothing new either. I mean, we're in the month of March, so this is not something surprising to see. There's limited rainfall and uh, it's very windy in some areas at times. And uh, to make things even drier, there is some Saharan dust moving into parts of the southeastern Caribbean. So this is a look at the forecast for this morning. We can see those brownish hues across parts of the uh, Lesser Antilles, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, the Grenadine, St. Vincent, even up to St. Lucia, Barbados, going into uh, northern South America. So uh, there is some dust moving in, not a very dense plume, but you may notice it. You may notice that it's uh, hazy out there and in higher uh, concentration, the dust can actually result in uh, its adverse health effects. So that's what's going on right now, guys. Now, as it relates to hurricane season, we'll be looking at a few variables, as I mentioned. And first up, we have the sea surface temperature anomaly uh, map here for the North Atlantic. And here we can see these different colors. Now, as we head from that shade of orange into that red, that is higher temperatures than normal so the brighter or the more vibrant the shade of red is the higher than normal the temperature is for the time of year in that area and we can see this large area all the way from africa offshore uh the iberian peninsula going straight to the caribbean we can see those more reddish shaded so temperatures are well above average in the area also in the caribbean and, the, and uh, in the gulf so for the most part Sea surface temperatures are well above average. And even as we take a look at this graph here, uh, we're seeing a comparison with other years. So there we have all the months of the year on the x-axis and the temperature on the y-axis. Now, the higher up these lines are, the higher the temperature is. Now, that bold black line is for 2024. And then uh, we have that mustardish one that is below it. That is last year, 2023, and since the start of the year, it is safe to say that we have been running in record territory here. Uh, we've had the warmest January and the warmest February on record. So is March going to be the warmest March on record as well? But uh, overall for the Atlantic hurricane season, those temperatures across the Atlantic are only going to get warmer. Matter of fact, what they are now is what we would typically see in the early part of the hurricane season. So sea surface temperatures are already supportive of tropical cyclone development. But of course, that's not the only thing. Wind shear needs to also be conducive and uh, there needs to be a lot of that middle of a moisture. So it's not just about the temperatures, but they're, they can make or break the hurricane season because I mean, uh, having record temperatures can easily fuel systems. And we see them jumping from category to category, from cat one to cat three to cat five. 
in no time. So that's the danger here. And uh, I've highlighted it before where models are basically projecting that we could see a more westward track of these systems into the Caribbean. And that is going to put the area at definite risk of this hurricane season. I mean, it's always a risk every year because we'll have even one system. And sometimes it doesn't have to be a multiple system. It doesn't need to be five, six, seven tropical cyclones. It can take just one to do the damage across um, many different areas. So we just have to be prepared, guys, and uh, do our part. And I will do mine by keeping you posted on a regular as I have been doing for years now. So yeah, this hurricane season likely to be very active. We're seeing all the signs, we're seeing the projections. And also in case you didn't see this when I posted a video earlier this week, this is the updated graphic uh, of the ENSO probabilities from NOAA. So this was issued on the 14th of March. The red bars indicate El Nino, the gray bars indicate neutral ENSO, and the blue bar indicates La Nina. So the higher these bars are, the higher the probability of seeing that phase at that time of year. So there we have uh, the months. We've got February, March, April, March, April, May, April, May, June, May, June, July. So gradually as we go along, we see the, uh, the gray bar kind of spike in, but then we see it going down and we see the blue bar going up, which means we're going to be transitioning from El Nino to neutral phase to La Nina as we're going to be heading into this hurricane season. So the chance is definitely high for that to happen. And I don't doubt it. So yeah, this hurricane season is certainly looking to be a very active one. And even looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly map of the world, look offshore South America in the Pacific, where see those darker blue shadings indicating some cooling. So it's already cooling a bit over there. So El Nino is making its way out. And uh, that's going to set the stage for what's to come in the next couple of months, which is La Nina. And uh, if you're not too clear, La Nina basically helps to influence the wind shear in the sense that uh, the wind shear is not too uh, unfavorable to prevent tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic basin. So in essence, it helps to favor a more active season, it helps to favor more tropical cyclone development in the Atlantic basin. Meanwhile, activity is a bit suppressed over in the Pacific. So there's a reduction in tropical cyclones over there. Meanwhile, an increase in tropical cyclone activity over in the Atlantic basin. So that is what typically happens, guys. But of course, I'm here to keep you posted on all that is happening as per usual. And that is what I wanted to share with you in this countdown video. So I really do hope that you found it to be very informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be otherwise.